fucking cracker. <laughs> that was a drive. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 The fucking drive in here. <laughs> uh, I fell in love with bodybuilding when I was 15 years old. When I was 15 year old, years old, I was like, I want to be a fucking pro bodybuilder. And my mom and dad, like, you know, they were typical mom and dad telling me I could do anything I want to do in the world. And I'm like, cool, like, yeah, that's awesome, whatever. I don't want to be a fucking astronaut. I don't want to do that. I want to be a pro bodybuilder. And everybody's like, all right, sure, Seth. So in my head, I just believed I could. And as I was getting there, 17, 18, 19, I was like, why is there nobody telling me, like, what to do? Why? I saw the hole. The hole was no one was saying like, yes, steroids are involved. Yes, you're going to have to put everything in your entire fucking life into it to make it. Like nobody was, they're just like, eat your chicken and rice. <laughs> Take my protein powder, all this fucking bullshit. And I'm like, all right, so it's kind of pissing me off. And at that point I learned that I was gonna have to do all kinds of research, all kinds of my own trial and error, and put everything I had into it and kind of fuck up some of my relationships at home, fuck up a lot of stuff, and just, like, there's a lot of people that are going to tell me I couldn't do it. So that's where I saw the hole. So whenever you watch all these videos and you see me today and why I do this, it's because no one's saying it. Why? Why is no one talking about it? Why was there no one just being open and honest? So after being in this position, I realized that People are a little insecure with themselves. They can't take the hate. They get a little chippy with stuff. And, uh, and then on top of that, sponsorships. You know, they're like, don't say that shit. That's bad, that gives, that gives the industry a bad name. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean a bad name? We're one step away from fucking porn, dude. <laughs> Judges are fucking competitors, and all this crazy shit, and nobody wants to fucking talk about it. And I'm here like, <laughs> Well, I guess you guys are a little uncomfortable with how fucking life works. Because there's always going to be fucked up shit happening in the world. And I'm the guy that now I'm, I've finally been able to put myself in a position where whether you fucking like me or not, I'm here. And judging on the base of this room and how full it is, everybody wants to hear it. Everybody's tired of the fucking bullshit. Everybody wants to hear the real shit. You want to know what's going to happen. And that's why, you know, I'm... I really like my life now because I put myself in this position. So, little bits along the way. I started, I turned pro in 2009. Muscle Tech was my first sponsor. I was broke as fuck. I didn't have no fucking money, dude. I was 23 years old, out of school, out of college, had a kid. I mean, it was, you name it, I fucked it up. So whenever I was like finally 23 years old, 2009, I was 24, started competing. I turned pro, had no fucking money, and I was like, I will do anything to make it happen. You know, my dream. Had a sponsorship with Muscular Development Magazine. They were paying me like 500 bucks a month. And if I turned pro, they'd start paying me 1,500 bucks a month. And I'm like, all right. And if I turned pro, I'd get a sponsorship. So Muscle Tech was my first sponsorship. Awesome people. Really, really good, really good group of people. They were the fucking $500 million a year company. So they were sponsoring everybody. And I was the young, clean-cut white kid. Who buys supplements? Young, clean-cut white kids. So I fit the mold. And at that point, I kind of fell into the industry of following the rules of everything. You know, I was just, I was like, whatever they told me to do, I did. And it kind of put like a burden on me. I didn't like it, but I didn't have any money. So I just, I bought into it. And uh, so over the years, I uh, just continued to compete. I, didn't co I competed in 2009, won my pro card. 2010, I won my pro debut. And I was just, I was fucking killing it. I was like the young white hope. Everybody loved it. It was great. I loved it. I started making more money. It was great. So I took 2011 off because I wanted to go. It was the 202 division at that time, not the 212s. And I wanted to go to the open class. So I said, okay, let's fucking get bigger. We took 2011 off. And in 2012, I was doing the Toronto Pro. That was my first big debut in the open class. What didn't go so fucking well? Before that show, I signed a contract for uh, $60,000 a year through muscular development. Pretty good money. I also was making roughly like 55, 55 grand through uh, 
uh, through muscle tech. So I'm a 25-year-old kid making over $100,000 living my dream. Really, really awesome. But I was kind of being told what to do and how to handle it, which was, okay, I didn't like it too much, but really good money. So turned pro, or I was doing the Toronto Pro, didn't go well, shit the bed. Fucked it all up. <laughs> didn't look like my normal self. I had a skin reaction to the oil. I, was, I went out on stage and looked like I was the dude with no fucking clothes on. A deer in headlights, like, is my dick out? This is fucking oil. I look like shit. So then from there, I was like, all right, after the show was over, I fucking hated everybody. Didn't like anything. I didn't handle the loss well. And after that, I was told to go and do the 212 division in Sarasota. So I was like, fuck it, dude, maybe I'm not cut out for the open. Let's go to do Sarasota. Did Sarasota, and I fucking shit the bed even worse there. Body fucking went to hell. Kidneys were starting to fail. I was fucking walking around like this, like, holy shit, what's going to happen? Body just gave up. Way too, took way too much shit. Way too many diuretics. Three days later, I got a phone call from Muscular Development Steve Leck. Or I didn't get a phone call, I got a letter. And the letter stated that I was cut. No more. No more $60,000 a year. Half my fucking yearly salary was gone. Even though we had a contract. It was a contract, and he took it away. Well, I couldn't fight it because I didn't have any fucking money. This dude's a multimillionaire. I'm fucked. I can't fight this. So, no more money. All of a sudden, my life went to shit. My head was a mess. I fucking hated everybody in the industry. Nothing went well, and I left. 2013, I just fucking disappeared. Muscle Tech wanted to keep the contract and make me travel, and they're like, we love you, we want to keep you, and I'm like, no, I'm fucking done. Because I was no longer happy with who I was as a person. I was very insecure. I uh, didn't like anything about the industry. I fucking hated it. But it was my passion my entire life. So, left the industry, my home life was shit as well, um, and nothing was going my way, I felt like. And that's whenever I said, Okay, I'm going to go get a normal job. I worked landscape, went back to hard labor. Uh, then I started fucking despising that. And then I moved into being a, I went to high school, for, or I went to college for uh, safety sciences. So OSHA, o, uh, o, OHS, regulations. So I went and got a job with a great guy, John Lafayette, worked as a consultant for like two and a half years. I was doing construction, oil and gas, all the consulting for that and safety. And then I fucking started hating that. Uh, so I realized that I was like, nothing is making me happy, what the fuck is going on? I'm a grown ass man, two fucking kids, like, shh, what the fuck? Making good money, everything was good, the job was great, made great money with, uh, as a consultant, but I wasn't happy. So that's whenever uh, Jason Ha, uh, I reached out to him because I was having trouble with my hormones, I couldn't get my body right. So I reached out to Jason, I was like, hey dude, I was like, I need a new fucking program. I need to get my shit together, I need to go get blood work, and I need you to tell me what the fuck to do. And he's like, you sound like you're a mess, are you lifting weights? I'm like, no. He's like, why not? I was like, I just fucking hate it. And he's like, get back to lifting weights. He got me on a little bit of a program, and then all of a sudden, I started like really enjoying it. And then like a month later, he's like, have you ever thought about coming back to the industry? I'm like, yeah, I think about it all the time. Like, I kind of miss it. And he's like, I think it'd be good for you to come back. Really? You think so? He's like, yeah, but you come back, make sure you do it your way. And I was like, yeah, that'd be the only way I'd do it. I was like, you're fucking killing it, aren't you? And he's like, yes, I am. I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and at the time, you know, I'm, you know, I had the beard. I didn't look like myself. You know, I had to, because when I left, I was a clean cut white kid. You know, no facial hair. That's what I needed to look like. So, uh, but at this time, you know, I had, you know, about half the beard I have now. Uh, just working, but missing it. So I started training, and then that's whenever I was driving around. I think, you know, I drove for a living as a consultant, job site to job site, you know, industry to industry. And uh, I was thinking of this idea that if I came back, I'd be like, what would I, what would I do? I, I was like, the fabric of America is made up of really hardworking blue collar men, all American roughnecks. So the the, the whole thought process was. I, would, I, I was like, the American dream consists of owning a nice home, having a good family, taking them on vacations, and making sure that the holidays are really nice. Like, that's all I work with. Every single day in construction, 
oil and gas was those type of guys. Similar to like a lot of guys in here right now. You don't want too much fucking more. You just want a good life with a family, a woman that loves you, your kids, have them in sports, have a nice home, go on vacation. The industry doesn't fucking have that. They don't show that. Because most of them are made up of kind of, I mean this in the nicest way possible, but egotistical douchebags. And I'm like, where was that? And that's when I said, when I come back, I want to be myself and I want to have a company that represents those people. Hence why so many of you in here are here wearing all the stuff, because you feel the same way. So I called Jason and I said, I think I'm going to come back. And he said, fuck it, ain't right, dude. That's great. Do it. And uh, at that point, that's when I started formulating the plan for All-American Roughneck. Like driving every day, I was thinking about it. Thinking about the fucking logo. You know, the, the axe and sledge with American flag silhouette. Because I wanted to be proud to be able to wear this hat. And that's when I called Bob. Bob and I didn't know each other too well. The guy kind of looks like me. Uh, he's back up. So if I fucking go down, he's coming in. Uh, so I called Bob. We still have some of the pictures of the first time he and I met in 2015. And I was telling him this idea, and he's like, cool. That's pretty cool. And at the time, Bob wasn't in too good of a position either. Kind of hating his life the same way, monotonous bullshit. And uh, I said, hey, if this works, I can't give you any fucking money right now. All I got is like 2200 bucks to put into this for shirts and like the whole production and all this stuff. And I was like, but if this works, I'll give you half of everything. He's like, well, half of nothing's nothing, but if it works, <laughs> this could be pretty fucking cool, you know? So uh, he and I just grinded the ever-loving fuck out of it. And then I, was, I called up Aaron and PJ from Blackstone Labs at the time, worked out a deal to come back, and the announcement worked with them, um, and it turned out to be pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so along the way, throughout the past few years here, I've been with two different companies, Blackstone and Primeval Labs. Um, there's good and bad in every situation. What I learned with Bob and I was that he and I get along really well, and we're, we, we see something special that was in the industry. We saw the hole, that hole that I talked about I saw when I was 17. I said, I want to fill that motherfucking hole with being me. And that's why whenever we came back with the whole image, people were like, who the fuck are you? I'm like, this is actually who I am. I'm a foul mouth fuck from Western Pennsylvania that don't give a fuck. I want to do good in life. I was raised by a wonderful woman, my mother. She had love, passion, and loved children. She raised me to be a good guy. But at 13 years old, I started going to work with my old man. He owns a cabinet company. So at 13, I started growing up around grown men in a wood shop that swore and talked about fucking women around me just to make me feel uncomfortable. And that's kind of how I became this guy. So I have a really good heart, but also just a side of me that's like, shut the fuck up and go to work, kid. Like, that's what I heard the first day of work. I was like, what should I do? Huh? Just do whatever the fuck they tell you to do. Cool, Dad, thanks. <laughs> so I had that mix. And that is what I wanted to bring into this. So with everything that was occurring, you know, with Gladstone Labs, I left because I, I started feeling like I didn't belong. I didn't belong in that group. And I left, and then Primeval came along, really great people, really good products. And then uh, when I was there, I realized that I, uh, I personally, I felt like I could do it better. Uh, and at that point, that's whenever uh, I met Mike. That's the other part of business partner, him and his business partner at the time, back home, Mike and Pat. We met them, and they were in the supplement industry. They were on the manufacturing side and did some other, other, other wholesaling. And I was like, so we sat down with a meeting and we started formulating the idea of Axe and Sledge. But there was a kicker to it all. We had to do it my way. And it turns out that my way was their way as well. You had to do it because you, you grow up and you meet people and you get around them and you start realizing that guys that have families, guys that have shit to lose, they don't want to fucking lose it. And that's why whenever you compare, you know, we look at my supplements, and what we've done with them, I'm not cutting fucking corners. I'm not gonna. I wasn't raised to. Some of the other companies in the industry, they cut corners here and there. I'm not like that. I don't want to do it because I've already fucking lied, cheated, and stolen my life, and not one single of them ever worked out. Everybody in here can say that they did something really fucking bad that they're not proud of, and they're like, yeah, it didn't fucking work. 
because every now and then it creeps up and bites you in the ass and you're like, God damn, dude. I've done those things. I'm not proud of them, but that's also how I learn. And when it comes to now, whenever I have two kids, and I have a lot to lose, I'm not going to fuck it up anymore. I'm going to do the right thing every fucking time, because when I look around in the, in the world, the industry, wherever you want to look, there's always going to be fuck bags, and I want to be the complete opposite. You know, with anybody in here that has kids or even fucking parents, I want to make my kids look at me and be proud that I'm their parent. I want them to be able to look at me and know that they can rely on me. Same with my parents. I want to make my parents proud. So with my parents, like I said before, with my dad, I want him to know that I work my fucking balls off. The day that son of a bitch dies, I'll probably shed a few tears, but he'll be like, okay, like, good. I taught you something. Go back to fucking work and earn money for your family. <laughs> but with my mom, she wants me to be a good hearted person. She wants me to do the right thing. Because she didn't raise a fucking asshole. So those are the things that resonate with me whenever you see anything that I do. Do I lose a little bit of money on margins with my products because they're very high end? Yeah, in comparison to other companies, sure I do. But you could probably ask me what I think and I'm going to say, I'm giving a fuck. <laughs> because I know that if I put out something that I'm proud of, it's going to do well. Hence why everything that we do is a little different. So, uh, right now where everything is, it's really intense time. Because now everything is starting to hit very hard. I'm halfway around the fucking world. Don't think for a second I don't take that very serious. Or understand the fucking like intensity of whenever we put out videos and the things I say. Because when I say things, it's the first steroids, drugs, and life video. How many people in here think that like everybody in the industry was really cool with it? No. <laughs> no. It was real. We got phone calls. And it was because they were like, I don't think this is a good idea. And my reply was, I don't really care. <laughs> I'm going to fucking do it. <laughs> and hence why everybody's here. You know, uh, I think that one of the reasons that I am in this position is because ever since a young age, I knew there was that hole. And now that I was able to be in that position, I had to become very comfortable with myself to be able to do this. So whenever I, get, I put out a YouTube video and people were like, oh, look at this fucking juice head. And I'm like, okay, good job. <laughs> you know, and, it's, and I'm like, well, yes. And me, I'm like, I get it. Some people get upset, but I'm half a psychopath. <laughs> to be in this position, to be doing professional bodybuilding, like Ronnie Coleman, for example. When Ronnie Coleman was in his fucking prime, the dude looked like a fucking alien. If he walked down the street, you're like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Don't care who you are, kids, grandmas, everything. They just look and they're like, Jesus, and he's just high voice, really super nice guy, <laughs> doing his fucking thing, walking around, and it's just like, what the fuck? And then everybody's like, do you think he does steroids? <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. nope, he doesn't. So, and, and that's, uh, I mean, that's kind of the thing that why body, why, why I'm so attracted to bodybuilding. I do have a screw loose. Every single fucking pro bodybuilder has a screw loose. You know, to do that, to be on that level, you're going to be fucking crazy. But, you know, that's why this business is so awesome because, you know, they say to get up on stage, there's no fucking rules, dude. You know, I'm really not better than anybody. I'm not better than anybody or they're not better than me. That's why I'm big with the no judgment thing. I don't give a fuck what you do. Like I tell people, I was like, if you're into like fucking flicking on and off light switches, that's like what gets you off. Bro, well, more power to you to do it. There's probably some fucking weirdo on the internet that loves it too. You can't get it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? It gets it. So that's why, you know, with uh, I don't really, I just want people to do good. Like, you know, like I said with my mom, like, uh, I do have a foul mouth. I'm a little fucked up. But like my kids are still able to be proud of me because I'm being honest. I'm not fucking lying about nothing. The reason I'm here to uh, you guys have, have, ask questions is because you can fucking ask me anything you want, and I'm not gonna fucking bullshit you. I'm just gonna be open, honest, 100%. Because if you don't hear the truth from somebody, then what the fuck is the use of asking a question of being? <coughs> so that's how I look at everything that we do. You know, that includes my supplements. That includes everything that we do. All the videos. It's, it's, I'm here for, to help you become better. 
Because if you do have kids, like, if you're a better person, like, whenever people watch my videos, they're like, man, like, that, that, that made me feel better. That makes me want to go achieve things in life. I'm like, fucking right, man. Because if you're a happier person, your kids are going to be in a better spot when you're happier. They're going to see you smile. They feel the shit from you. Same with your significant others. If you have a really shitty day at work, and you go to the, and your wife's like, hey, like, you know, what's going on, da da da, and you're like, oh, fuck this, fuck that, come home, you're an asshole. It's, you're dragging it there. You're incredibly important to your household. And if you're a fucking asshole 90% of the time, the people in your life are going to be a fucking asshole back to you 100% of the time. But if you become something that's phenomenal, like being just the best motherfucker you can be at everything, it's going to change everybody. It's going to change how your wife perceives you, vice versa between the two of you. Your children, you know, uh, by, by Thursday sometimes I'm like, okay, kid, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, I just want to sit here and watch Game of Thrones or something. But like, uh, you know, that's whenever you're like, okay, just calm down, you hit the gym or do whatever. Like my, my fiance, if I'm in a little bit of a mood, she asks, did you do your cardio today? I'm like, fuck, it's that noticeable, huh? <laughs> did I go to the gym? <laughs> What's going on? And, uh, you know, those are the things that have to occur, but never downgrade how important you are, you know, to your family. It, 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 the gym is important to me. I train, I, I, I like training every day. I love doing my cardio. I like eating healthy. And it's a little selfish at times, but at the same time, if I'm not me, I won't be the best that I can be. So in your relationship, you got to make sure that you're open and honest with everybody so that you can be the best you can be. And that's, that's, that's what I consider to be the good shit. Because I do have a very awesome fucking life right now. I have a wonderful woman. My kids are happy and healthy. I say that now because I also know how bad it sucks to be in a really fucking terrible relationship. I was married for almost 10 years, and it was an ugly 10 years. Went through a lot of bullshit. So... That's how I'm able to stand here and be a little more confident in myself because I know what it feels like to be in a shitty situation and I know what it feels like to be in a really good situation. And I'm sure some of you guys can say the same. So make sure you never downgrade how important you are to your life as well. But that's pretty much the long and short of me where I'm at. You know, it's been intense and it's, uh, I'm very fortunate. I'm halfway around the world, I ate a kangaroo. Uh, I just got to see one now and kill a koala bear. <laughs> Take it home with me. Uh, not the chlamydia, though. That's the um, so at this point, I mean, I'm, I'm open for questions. You guys want to ask anything about training, nutrition, supplementation, gear, my personal life, whatever you guys want to know about, oh, I'm an open book right now. Bodybuilding, put it this way, with, with competitive bodybuilding, you're throwing everything out the fucking window. Don't even think for a second, but like I said, batshit fucking crazy. You know, uh, so right now I have put myself, when I was, whenever I was 20 years old, when I first started taking shit, uh, I knew that like, I was fucking my body up. I did all the research, I knew that I might never fucking, my testosterone levels might never come back, like might, I say might, and then now I sit here and I'm like, fuck no, they ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> If I, I'm on, you know, I'm on TRT, I go to a doctor, um, all that, I get checked, you know, every six months. Um, and then, like, per, per, I just did an off-season program. I was about 214 pounds when I started. I want to be, like, 210 when I'm all said and done, and then, like, just be functional and feel good and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did that program because I was like, I want to see if I still fucking got it. And I wanted to put a program together for everybody that I could put out and say, this is what I did, this is how I did it. Because there's a lot of people that put out programs and they don't, they don't show what they did. Like, or they look like shit and they just put out a program and you're like, how the fuck am I supposed to compare this? This isn't good. So I did, uh, I did 14 weeks. I gained 30 pounds. I went from 214, roughly 30. I went from 214 to my highest being 246. And uh, crazy lean, different because I was older, more mature muscle, but in comparison for everybody else, what I would recommend is, so if you do a cycle, you gotta think, okay, I'm gonna fuck myself for about 12 to 16 weeks. 
because if you do it, you got to put everything into it. You can't half-ass it. What's I want to use like an Australian term here. Uh, uh, don't get pissed. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but so no no let's plan on So uh, you know you want because so for 16 weeks you want to make sure you're dedicated to that. Now how much time do I take off after that? Well, considering you just ran 16 weeks of shit, your butt's fucked. You're gonna have to bring it back. You're gonna have to make sure it's cool. Then you gotta make sure you do a, a post cycle therapy, like a PCT, do a good program, you know that. And then uh, I'd probably say, depending on what your goals are, like where do you wanna go with it? Are you gonna do another show? Are you gonna try and make this your life? Or are you just gonna come down and see what happens? I'd probably say time off, like at least, at least 10 weeks. You know, normalized, because once you get normalized, you'll be like, okay, so after I'm done here, I'm gonna get normalized, and that'll take you about three to four weeks to come back to normal, which you won't be. Um, and then after that, you're like, oh, well, I'm just gonna start another one here about 10 weeks after this. That's where the whole blasting and cruising came from. Because you're like, oh, I'm just gonna get off anyway, fuck my body, and then fuck it up again, and then stop, and fuck it up again. It starts getting hairy. It is, it's dangerous. I did it for a long time. And especially now with social media, no one ever really comes off, you know. So the blasting and cruising thing came into play, and I'd probably say that like my my normal dose, uh, like if I whenever I do like a like a cruise or but it's not really it's like just me being normal. It's around 300 milligrams a week. Like that's where I function on a very good level. And why? Because I'm going to do this shit. I've never said I'm not crazy. Remember, I said, right. So I still do dumb shit. Um, so, uh, and right now when I get home, like uh, probably, a, probably two weeks after I get home, I start a prep program. I'll do 12 weeks of me going from being, you know, take a couple weeks and fill up and then 10 weeks of really hardcore dieting so I can show everybody how to do it. And then after that, I'll decide what I want to do. But, um, you know, if you're a competitor, I can't stress the fact enough that after you get off, you are, and I don't know if you guys have like HRT clinics here, hormone replacement therapy. You go to a doctor, you get your blood work done. Uh, they're specifically made for, you know, older men, us. And then they go in there, you get your blood work done, they look at it and tell you what you look like. Me, I just want to make sure that uh, my heart's working well, kidney and liver, and my intestines. Those are the ones that I'm most concerned about because I know that my kidney and liver, they, take a, they will take a beating from what we do. And then uh, heart, obviously, is, you don't have a heart, you're fucked. Um, <laughs> and then just shitting <laughs> my intestines. Because if it's all fucked up in the gut, oh man, you're gonna be a mess, you're gonna hate life. So those are the four that I really pay attention to. Um, and that's why I also do a ridiculous amount of cardio. Firm believer in cardio because I just wanna see my dick every morning, stay lean, and have a good ticker. That's it. Cool. Thanks very much for coming, Seth. Yeah. Awesome. Thank awesome you. Awesome to see you. Love your videos. Love Seth sets. Awesome. Um, what do you think of Trestaline meant? What's that? What do you think of Trestaline meant? Trestaline acunate? Tremolin? No. Trestaline. No? No. Meant. You know, I've never gotten too, too crazy with the uh, outside of the basic shit of the industry. It was like a um, male contraception first. Oh no, I don't need that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 I got two. I'm way more. Six hundred times stronger than test. But an anabolic rating? Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So perfect. Okay. Yeah. All right. Rich was a fucking psychopath. We all can agree on that. Really good dude. He was honest. He paved the way for for people like myself to be able to talk about this. But make no mistake, Rich was a fucking lunatic. But he also had a good heart, so that's why people were attracted to him. He was a good dude. Um, now, with things like that, like, okay, like test no ester, anybody ever hear TNE uh, or test suspension? Yeah, okay, he does, yeah. So, okay, now, whenever we're looking at things from a health standpoint, anything like you're referring to, bro, it's going to fucking work. It's going to work really, really fucking quick. Awesome. The quicker, the better, right? Kind of. For every action, there's a reaction. So if he's to take something that is 600 more times anabolic than testosterone, okay, well that's cool. It means it's going to work. I'm going to get crazy jack. What's the side effects? <clears throat> You're going to crash like a motherfucker. So like test test suspension, it is fucking awesome. 
Bro, if you take a jam into your fucking leg, like 20 minutes before a workout, before you go train legs, you are going to have the craziest leg workout ever. You'll probably end up having a heart on like three quarters of the way through the workout. <laughs> but the hard part is all of a sudden, if you don't have your like blood levels fucking checked with like a, with a long acting ester, like a uh, sipinate or an anthate, bro, you'll just go up and then come right the fuck back down. So that's going to fuck with your head, the mood swings. So make sure that like, you know, for, e for every single thing that I take, like there's side effects. You know, that's the big thing now is SARMs and peptides. People are all about them and they're excited. And I'm like, hey, that's great, but guess what? There is no fucking like actual medical documentation behind it. So no one knows what the fuck is going to happen. All everybody knows is like, they said no side effects and I can take it. But fucking hey, dude, go ahead. Tell me how it works out for you. Well, I'm not doing it. But at the same time, I sit here and say I take, you know, I've taken fucking 1,500 megs of test, 2,000 megs of test in a week. And it's like, yeah, well, I know, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> uh, and I know what's going to occur because it's, they, they've done it. There's medical studies that say, like, this is what to expect. And then whenever I'm doing, like, my own little experiments, I'm like, okay, I remember this. Yeah, this is fucking wild. And I'm all excited because I'm fucking 245 pounds. My fucking dick's hard 24-7. <laughs> I look like an animal. I'm rowing fucking 400 pounds. Awesome. But then, like, when I lay down at night, I'm like, are you okay, honey? Fine. <laughs> are you going to die? I don't know. <laughs> that shit's real. Or whenever you're sitting there at nighttime and you're all snuggled up and, like, your girl's like, Jesus, are you sweating? Yeah, it's fucking hot here. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's like 65 degrees in here. So, like, you're thinking to yourself then, you're like, holy fuck, like, those are the side effects. Like, how good can that be for you? And then there's a side of you that's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> those are, those are, that's real shit, you know. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, so with all, with, 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 with things that are really intense, bro, they work, like insulin, insulin works, man. It's the most fucking anabolic thing on the market. Like, I was 245 pounds, like, like four or five weeks ago. You know, before I, I stopped the program because I knew we were traveling a lot, had all the shows, I'm starting my next one. And I look at it and I say, like, if I wanted to get to 265, I knew exactly what the fuck I had to do. You just have to be willing to do it. And I'm like, ah, oh, I can't do normal people things right now. Like, lay on the ground with my kid and, like, then get up without groaning. So I'm like, I'm good at 250, I'm good at 245. But whenever you see big guys out there, you're like, okay, they've got to be doing some serious shit. And they have 100% dedicated their entire fucking life to bodybuilding. That's why we love it, because they are freaks. Freaks! Like, you go, this is an entertainment business. This is not a fucking sport. This takes no fucking talent whatsoever. This just takes fucking hard work, determination, will, and fucking, you got good genetics. That's like the, the skill, I guess. But it's entertainment. Like, Big Rami. He's a fucking freak. Did you ever see him in real life? Bro. Oh. He's a goddamn refrigerator with the doors open walking. <laughs> now the thing is, it's like we want to see that. And, and why I say the no judgment thing, I'm here talking about this and it's like fucking scary. But it is. You've got to take it serious. And these guys have been like, I don't want to work at a fucking desk. I don't want to carry block. I want to lift weights and be a fucking freak. So that's where the no judgment thing comes in, and I'm like, I'm not judging these motherfuckers because they love it. They have a passion for this shit that is unrivaled. And you have to, because I, I did it, and I just look, I'm like, man, this is awesome. Keep fucking doing it. It's their shit. And that's why it's like the no judgment, I want to make sure that everybody understands that it. it's just, it's awesome. You know, like I remember, for me, it was Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cutler. Like the early 2000s, when I saw them two, 320 fucking pounds, I'm like, God. So, but yeah, it's intense. I mean, I'm, I'm, I was drawn to it because they told me there was no rules, and I was like, fuck yeah, let's do that. So is everybody else. So in your opinion, at what age do you believe would be a good starting point, and what would you start on? Never, dude. <laughs> <laughs> never, 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 never. I mean, I hate to say it, like I, I sound like a hypocrite saying that, but it's kind of like, okay, um, like, when's a good time to start? Ever, man. It's not. It's because you know, you're going to change the chemistry of your body. You're going to. 
And if you're willing to accept that and accept all the consequences that go with it, fuck yeah, man, more power to you. I ain't your dad. I just, I, uh, go ahead. Uh, but at the same time, just be very aware of what can occur because it fucking will. It's not like if or maybe. It's fucking going to. So, uh, like, as a grown, as a man, you probably, you continue to grow, you know, into your early 20s. You know, how long, every, there's so many factors that come into it. How serious you, are you about training to begin with? How long have you been training for? You know, what have you dedicated and what are your goals? And if your goals are just to look good naked, you know, and you love training, expect to fucking be addicted to it the rest of your life. Because this, they're not, they're, you, you become physically dependent upon these things because your body now will, if you take testosterone and shove it into your body, your natural production stops. <coughs> so at that point, you're like, that's why I have to take the HCG, the clomid, the Novodex, turn until your body turn back on after you stop taking it. But what happens is, is if I like turning on and off a light switch, that's what gets me off, and then there's something to make me turn it off and on even better, I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> that's what's going to occur with you. That's, I mean, that's, I wanted to be a pro bodybuilder. I was willing to do anything to do it. And then I became engulfed by it. And fortunately enough in my life, I've been able to become this person and do what I do. But you also have to just be willing to pour it into it. Um, but your early 20s is whenever you, you know, stop growing as a man, like you know, 23, 24. Um, and then naturally, your testosterone begins to drop around 35. So many things come into play when your natural testosterone starts to shut down. That's why hormone replacement therapy has become such a big thing in the States. I'm not sure if it's big here. But, um, you know, around 40 years old, like your testosterone has definitely taken a hit with life, with stress, with fucking work, with everything. And you're no longer the 22-year-old girl, 22-year-old guy fucking everything in sight and just loving life and going nuts. You've got shit, you got fucking work, kids, family, everything. So that kind of takes a hit, that yeah, cortisol levels, cortisol will take a huge hit into your testosterone and it'll drop. So then you start taking the test and that's how it goes. I've escalated that with my fuckery. But as a young kid, expect that to also escalate if you begin to take them. Like how do you balance work, going to the gym with your kids? Like I'm a uni student, I study a lot, I've got a yeah. part-time job, how do I like balance all with the gym and all that sort of stuff as well? Or in a 24 hour gym and shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I tell you what, like, so me, like, I was like, you know, Pete West says, I'm like, bro, that's what I did. Like, I worked my fucking balls off. I was, I just, I never stopped because I wanted it that bad. And then it's like, well, how much did you sleep? And I'm like, not much. <laughs> it's just, it's it, even like whenever I started All American Rock Town, you know, I was 31, 30, and, uh, I worked, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day as a consultant, and then I, I'd uh, come home, I'd work on some paperwork with Bob, he lived four hours away from me at the time, uh, eat with the family, get the kid to bed, and then I would go train, because my dad had a little bit of a workout gym upstairs in his shop, so around 11 o'clock in the evening, I'd go back up to his gym after the kids went to sleep and all my shit was done and train, and then train for an hour, hour and a half, come home, get a shower, eat, and go to bed, you know, around like 1 o'clock, 1.30, and I'd wake up at 4, 4.30, 5 o'clock the next day, get ready for work. So, you know, I was doing that, you know, three years ago, four years ago. That's just, that's, that's how it works. And that's why, like, you'll hear entrepreneurs say, like, how, what are you willing to do? And it's like, that's what I was willing to do. Did it stress the family out? Fucking right, it did. Did it fuck up some shit? Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, how bad do you want it? Because that shit builds character. That shit makes you who you are. Because not every motherfucker wants to do it. So if you want something, you do it. And along the way, you might lose some people that like you. You might lose some people that love you. But, bro, it's your fucking life. I'm not here for nobody else. I want to enjoy my life, and part of my life has become all of you, because people also ask me, like, what's my motivation? Like, how do I continue to tick? Motherfucker, my shit is awesome. I know how bad it sucks to have a bad life. My shit at home was really bad five, six years ago. Now it's really good. My motivation, whenever I put out a video, people get all fucking amped up. 
you guys are fucking freak out. It's like, fuck yeah, another training video. Needed one. Maybe give me a workout. Give me something new. Give me something fresh. So whenever I look at the comments, I'm like, man, this shit is hitting people. This is helping you become a better person. And if you become a better person, just a little bit of pick me up that day, that means you're going to take that energy home with you. And if you take that energy home with you, that means your, your whole family's going to feel it. Your circle will feel it. So it means, you know, just living life and becoming better. That's, that's, like a, that's a thing for me. But, you know, make sure you, you do you. It'll be tough. People might make fun of you, but fuck them. Be good. What else we got? Who was there? Go ahead. Yeah, just uh, uh, two questions. One is, um, uh, as you get a little bit older, um, obviously people talk about all the drugs and everything, which isn't everything. I mean, you need to be more than pharmacist to be able to actually get some games. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> does it, in terms of the food and training, as you get older, do you actually take breaks from training at all, like extended breaks? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I was doing that program. Like, uh, I did that program for 14 weeks. and that's well, in terms of the training. Yeah, yeah, so I did the program, and while I was training, I was fucking going nuts. Hammering my body 100% every day. Every single day I trained, I was going fucking balls in the walls. But right now, like, now I train at like 60% of what I, of what I normally do. I don't need to be doing fucking 2,200 pound leg presses. No fucking way. Whenever I'm going nuts, yeah. But you have to give yourself a break, and as I've gotten older, like you saw me stretching my knees right now, I'm getting old. <laughs> I feel it. Uh, and then, for example, same thing with deadlifts. You know, squats, I don't do them as much because I already have a foundation built on physique-wise. And if I was squatting 500 pounds every week, oh, man, my knees would be shot. So I'd probably say for me, um, I, I'm, I stay really in tune with my body, like how I feel. Like if my elbows are creaking, if they're hurting that day and I'm supposed to train arms, well, I'm not going nuts. <laughs> I mean, there's parts of me that I'm like, ah, fuck yeah, push through it. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, no. <laughs> Calm down, you're old. <laughs> you want to make sure it's like the next day, I'd be like, man. I, have, I go to my brother for therapy. He's a uh, chiropractor, so he does all my muscle therapy. Take that really serious. I should probably take it more serious than I do. Um, but I do everything in stints. I put a program together. I, have, uh, I, I write everything out. I see what I want to accomplish in that time and go after it. And then I also have to take the next step and like, what's my post, my, my, my post program concept? Because you can't just stop, because you know, I love this. So I figure out like right now I'm training 60%. You know, some days I'm just like, I'm just gonna do my cardio. And the same thing with nutrition. Like I'll go crazy with my nutrition. Like that program was, I was eating anywhere between four and 7,000 calories a day. And right now there's not training like that. Like that's why everybody you said, everybody's talking about all these cycles, that's all wonderful. But you can take all the shit in the world you want. If you're not fucking training and eating and sleeping and paying attention to your hydration and all your vitamins and minerals, you're not going to get shit. So it's like I was, uh, I make sure that everything is just firing on all cylinders. And the food was crazy high. That was probably the, that was probably the craziest part about the whole program was the food. And whenever we, whenever we release it, which should be in April, you'll see that just the food is just astronomical. So, yeah, all of it has to tie together. And then, like, right now, I probably eat, like, 2,500 calories a day, you know, in comparison to the four. So whenever I start the new program back up, when I get home for the, 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 the prep program, I'll eat that, I'll eat big for a couple weeks and then slim everything down and go through that. But if you don't give your body a break from the, the stress, any type of stress, uh, you'll just, you'll beat it up, yeah. The second question is quick was um, what's the future for Accent Sledge? I mean, it's great that you're so honest, you've, you've clarified what most of us all knew about pro bodybuilding anyway, it's just that you actually made some real. Yeah, I guess it makes it makes it actually. And, um, which is great, but most of us who are just gym hacks, you know, most of the products pretty much do the same thing, but it's the person that you identify with and I guess the credibility behind their brand mm -hmm. that actually makes sense to us. So the future for Accent Sledge is just either you focus on you personally what to do or is it? So with everything that we put out, we, we did some things that are starting to be copycatted in the industry. For, for example, like when we came out, like hydraulic fuel pump, that's our number one seller. It's the same product, fuel pump. We were, we, we were uh, ran into some legal problems because there was another company out there with a product called Pump Fuel, and they have Pump Fuel trademarked. 
and then they told us to stop selling it, and I was like, no, fuck you. <laughs> no, fuck you. And then it came into a little bit of a pissing match, and I was like, okay, you know, since they do own a trademark on it, I, own, I have trademarks for all of my stuff as well. We as a team decided we're such a young company, we can rebrand the name of it as Hydraulic, and just, if we were five years in, out of fucking no way. <laughs> But since that is our flagship product, it's our best seller in every online and everything, but that's my baby. Now the whole thing is here, it's a stem-free, pump-free workout. It has five patented ingredients. Whenever you see something with a patented ingredient, that means that you can't get any higher quality of that ingredient. And there's one thing that I learned in manufacturing, one of the reasons I like to do, I wanted to make my company, was because other companies kind of fucking skim on it. I can develop a really shitty product and not tell you how shitty it is and glorify it and fucking rape you. I don't want to do that. I wasn't raised to be that guy. So we have uh, hydraulic that has five patented ingredients. No one puts five patented ingredients in a product. Why? It's fucking expensive. But whenever you have a hell of a team behind you that can get shit done and do things that other people aren't willing to do, it really works out for us. So hydraulic was the one that we created, and I said, I asked, I was like, why can't we do this? What do we have to do in order to get higher quality ingredients in a product? It wasn't hard, it just took a lot of fucking work. And whenever you have people like Bob, Mike, and our other owner, Pat, shit gets done. That's why with hydraulic, there's patent in ingredients, that's non-stem pump pre work out on the fucking market. I, don't, I honest to God believe that. Ignition switch, there's four patent ingredients in that. Why? Because I wanted it that way. I wanted, you, could, you, you can't get any higher quality ingredients, so why not do it? Our fucking carbohydrates have an ingredients in that as well. It, it, uh, most carbohydrate powders are just straight fucking carbolin. I wanted to put cyclic dextrin and carb 10 in there. One's a really short acting, when one is a quick acting uh, rapid glycogen loader. The other is a little bit longer, so whenever you take it, you get a little bit of an insulin spike, then you also have something to take time throughout your workout, so you're not fucking scooping something into your shake three times throughout your fucking workout. I was like, why, why am I, like Cardinal, I used to take four, five, four to six scoops a day. I take one to two. You know, and I was like, why is nobody creating these products? Well, because they're not being honest. They just want to shove product down your fucking throat and do it. I was like, well, I want to take it, and if I get to invest my fucking ridiculous amount of money it takes in to start a company. I want to do it my way. So with everything that you see us do, you can damn well guarantee that you're going to see those logos. See the little, the, the little logos we put on the front there, mm -hmm. like of each patented ingredient? You have, to, you have to contact those people and make sure it's cool with them to put it on the front of your fucking logo, on the front of your label. So what's that taking more of? Time and money, effort. That's the people we got on the team. So with everything you see us do, you'll continue to see that level. You know, you'll, and with everything we do, because well, it's, this industry, we all know, you just said it yourself. You all knew the truth about it. You just need somebody to validate it. And it's the same thing with our products. You'll see me continually do it. But you also won't see me kind of put down other people's products. You know, other people make really good products. And my products, there might be something you take and be like, I just don't like it, Seth. I'll be like, all right, cool. Good, take something else, because this is about you and you feeling good. I want you to take it, go to the gym and fuck shit up and feel really good. If my product doesn't do that for you, well, then that's great. I'm glad you tried it, I appreciate it, but you being a better person is what is the main focus here. And that's again why I make sure that I did the best I could with doing everything I'll do. When you got 17, 18, 19, and you laugh at every single just going to the gym and stuff, but like, like, what did you do? Like, and what was your vision in the future? I had no fucking clue, dude. <laughs> you, if you would have said five years ago, Seth, you're going to be in Australia talking to a room full of people. And if you aren't in Australia, you're doing all this shit. I said, fuck off. <laughs> uh, so, but it, it, at, at that age, I wanted to be pro bodybuilder on stage. I loved Jay Cotton, dude. That was my man. I fucking idolized him. You know, they called him mass with class. They called him the man with the plan. Because he wasn't just bodybuilding, he also had business side of him. And he's <coughs> still killing it to this day with business. So for me, I had this vision that I wanted to be a pro bodybuilder. I wanted to be on stage. I wanted, I wanted to feel good about myself. 
because I was very, very insecure with myself until I was like 26, 27. You know, most competitors are. You know, we want people to look at us and we want people to feel really good, but then we have really thin skin and if somebody says, I'm a small, bald, small dick, white juice head, we're like, oh, no. <laughs> now I'm like, okay, cool. I gotta go to fucking work now. I'll see you later. Yeah. Uh, so those types of things, like whenever you're that young, when, at that point, I just wanted to be a pro bodybuilder. I wanted to do something incredible. I wanted to eventually, like I said, whenever I'd be sitting there training or at night dreaming, I'd be like, man, why is nobody being, why, why do I feel like there's something missing? Like, I know you don't just eat chicken and rice, fucker. You know? <laughs> Where's that? So at that point, I said, you know, if I ever got, if I ever got to make my own supplements. At that time, when I was like 18, Muscle Tech was killing it with Cell Tech. Um, fuck. What else? Rip Fuel was huge. Hydroxy Cut. You know, all those fucking ads. Who else in here knows? Who's older that remembers those? Yeah. You remember them. They were fucking, you're like, I took Hydroxy Cut for eight weeks and I did this. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> But those, so I saw that and I was like, man, if I ever got to do my own, I'd like, I want to do it good. So again, that goes back to his question, like, you know, uh, I, I also remember that kid. You know, and I was like, I want to stay true to that person. You know, and it's not really, it, it, it is a motherfucker. There's multiple owners to that, to this company, Axe and Sledge, and it's because, you know, I'm not a greedy fuck and I know that I'm not the best at everything. Pretty business savvy, but when it comes to other parts of the business, those guys are really good at what the fuck they do. So if we all stay in our lines and make sure that we do the best we can and hold each other to the same standard on every level, you're going to have a powerful motherfucker. So as a kid, bro, just keep dreaming. And dumb ideas that reach around in your head, well, they might sound dumb to people. They might be far-fetched as a motherfucker. But remember, dude, I'm a small town. I was born in a really fucking small town in western Pennsylvania. Like... It's a podunk as a motherfucker. <laughs> Meaning like it's heck. <laughs> it'd be good. It would, what would it be? I don't know what podunk means. I know. I thought I wanted to throw it in. So I've been learning Australian, well, like pufta. I do I remember that. They're going to get some fucking miracle slack here. Come on. Uh, so I'm learning. I'm taking that one fucking home too. Uh, but, you know. Whenever I say like, <laughs> I said it right. Hey, uh, yeah. I heard I had to put bloody in front of it. You're a bloody poof now. Um, what's that? But uh, no, so I mean, it's uh, those things as a kid, those dumb ideas that you have, bro, they can happen. It's just going to take work. You know, I also, I'll say this right now, I fucking hate the phrase self-made. I really do. I don't like it simply because, like, uh, like in order to be self-made, you don't need anybody. And if I didn't meet good people and bags of shit along the way in my life, I wouldn't be this person. You know, so make sure you 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 don't 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 uh, don't sell yourself short on anything. It's possible. It just takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work, and you meet good people, you meet bad people, you make mistakes. Like I'm definitely gonna fuck up again before I die. You know, everybody will see it happen, but I'm okay with it. I'll just be like, yeah, I fucked up, dude. It really sucks. Yeah. But that's how it goes, so we're good. Yeah. Just with your products and everything, if you're having like a big training day, what would be the best way to use, like your, and what would you use? Okay, perfect, yeah. So the names of the products are pretty cool. We like that we named that like blue collar shit. Um, so hydraulic, the non-stim pre-workout, and the ignition switch can be mixed together. Okay, like for me, like on a big training day like back and legs, what I'll do is I'll take a scoop of hydraulic, a scoop of ignition switch, and a scoop of demo day. So the whole point is there that I'm going to get a pump, but I'm not going to, because if you take two scoops of, of hydraulic, bro, you're going to have a stupid fucking pump. And if you're doing legs, your lower back is going to be swollen as fuck. So it's like, oh man, like I don't really want that same thing with deadlifts. But a scoop of that with a scoop of ignition switch, it's going to be great because you're going to get the stems, you're going to feel it, you're going to get the, ner the, the neurotropics from ignition switch as well, so you're going to get pretty focused. You're going to get the pump from hydraulic and then you'll get the carbs from demo day. So we made them all to be, to be combined like that or just taken individually as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, the demo day, like I, we called it demo day because it was like, a, you know, 
the demo day is time to fuck shit up. So that's and that's why again, and I know products are expensive. I fucking paid for them my entire life. You know, spent a ton of money on them. So it's like ignition switch and hydraulic. If you took one scoop of each for an entire month, or for, for if you just took one scoop of each, you have 40 workouts. You know, and there's 30 scoops in demo day. So you'll have a total, if you took one scoop of each, you got 30 days right there, 30 workouts. And that's over a month of workouts because you don't train every day, you know. So that was our concept with to make sure that we're still putting out something, you know, high, a higher end product, but also make it so that like, it's like uh, uh, economically affordable. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's like, but if you're having that with like, like uh, that's does that sort of slow down the isolate? Sure. Yeah. 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 But then it, it's kind of one of those things that like uh, people will be like, well, then why the fuck are you taking fats with an isolate? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because an isolate's supposed to be nice and clean. Yeah. You know, really low fat, easy on the belly, easier on the belly, that type of thing. But it will, yes. Yeah. So I mean, I eat peanut butter with everything. Yeah. Peanut butter is <laughs> really good too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. What else we got? Fire. Um, where did you find the drive, especially when you were working with only three hours of sleep in a construction job? How were you able to find the drive and deal with the bullshit? Yeah, so uh, I kind of looked at that as just being older. Uh, as I got older and I realized whenever I went through a little bit of shit, a lot of bit of shit with my ex, I was like, what the fuck else am I going to do with my life? If I want this to be awesome, I'm the only motherfucker that can make it awesome. Because there's going to be a lot of people out there that don't want me to fucking do it. You know, people told me this was a bad idea. A lot of people. Yeah. It's going to cost a lot of money. and take a lot of time. But there was three other people and their families that were like, we should do it. And then the same thing with t-shirts, you know, with the All-American Roughneck. People are like, sounds pretty fucking stupid. I'm like, what's fucking stupid? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so but me, I was like, uh, I, I also say in life, like, bro, I don't want to live with regret. I don't. I want to make sure, like, if I got to sleep three hours, I want to sleep three fucking hours, dude. I don't care. Because I want it. And if I don't do it, and I, like, another year later, I'm like, man, I really wish I would have started that thing. Why didn't I do it? I was probably going to fail. Fuck it. If you don't try, you'll never know. So for me, motivation is just like, what the fuck else am I going to do, dude? I don't, I don't know. I just want to do it. Now, I guess maybe that's a little bit of a different mindset that I was, I was raised in that environment, that whole shut the fuck up and go to work thing with my dad. Like, bro, like when my dad's dad died, like I didn't see him like at the wake, like everybody's eating. I was like, where's dad? They're like, he's at the office. And I'm like, fuck is dad doing at the office? And then he came back and he's like, oh, so, you know, it's got to be work. He's probably crying at work. But, you know, he went to work and that's the same thing. Don't expect that of me. So it's just, but the motivation is just, you know, I, I love what I do. I'm very fortunate to do this. and I'm not going to take it for granted because I'll work my fucking balls off till the end for it. Um, like you say, when you go to the gym, like, you got to fuck shit up. But, like, how would you, how, like, what do you do to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, like, okay, let's put it this way. I fucking hate dieting. I fucking hate hardcore dieting. I like to eat. I like to eat healthy, but I like to, I like my coffee a certain way. I like snacks. I love my gummy bears. Whenever you diet, all that shit leaves. But fucking training? Oh, I love to train. That is my shit. Like, so like, whenever I'm like all fueled and I'm like eating my fucking first meal, my second meal, and I'm like, it's leg day, and I'm like, fuck, I'm eating a lot of food. It's going to be awesome. Like that's how my head works. It's because the the people always say like you know the iron iron therapy you know fucking go to the gym is my therapy, bro. Training is my shit. I fucking love it. It's because it was the place that like it was just me. Like it was just it made me feel good. Like I I was a fat kid growing up. Like my nickname was Chubbs when I was like twelve or thirteen years old. I got made fun of. I'm like, Fuck this shit. I'm going through puberty and I'm like no oh, I don't want this. I want to look good naked. You know? So like uh, like when it comes to like going to the gym and fucking shit up, bro, that is my thought process. Like uh, he was asking like now that I'm older, like I gotta slow down at times, but whenever I'm going, I just I love training. It is my favorite thing in the world to do. That's why you see me throw in different exercises, different types of uh, of in things to add intensity to the workout. It's just because I, I love it. It's my shit, and that's you know that's like it goes back to that light switch thing. You know, first you got that weird flicking on and off that light switch, man. Like, it's your shit, do it, man. Find those things in your life that make you come alive and don't disregard them. 
I mean, if it's killing people, maybe not do that. <laughs> but like, you know, the good shit. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask with the um, training, what you might say on the future, you've got your shoulders working out, for example, and that might be one. How often would you actually do that particular work? Are you doing something different every week? So uh, uh, it depends on goals, like what I want to do. I throw out some of them crazy workouts so that it changes up your monotony. And the same thing with me, like uh, uh, in the program that I did, I found a couple, I found two back workouts that I did for fucking 14 weeks. I really didn't deviate from those two because they just fucking, they murdered me. I was sore every week, my back grew like crazy. I was going well. Uh, one thing that I had problems with was my arms. Like I, my arms are my weak body part, so I was like, I gotta find it. So I switched it up quite a bit until I found one that worked. Um, so you just kinda, uh, uh, it was always, uh, if I had like a day where I was like hating life, and like long day at work, or just shit was wrong, and I was off that day, I might go to the gym and just do something really off the fucking wall because it goes back to me liking training and just feeling good. I always in training would find the harsh, the hardest thing to do, let's do that. When's it gonna make me quit? I'm gonna stop, whether it was with 15 pounds or 100 pounds. Just wanna see how far I could push myself. So that's why all them workouts, I like putting them out, it's just because it adds a little bit of spice to your, your life that day. Yeah. Um, On your body, what would you be your favorite body part and your least favorite body part? Right now I really like training legs. Why? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> Six weeks ago, that would have been the last thing I said. Uh, it changes. Uh, right now, I'm, I, I'm, I don't enjoy training arms. I don't know why. I'm just not into it. Sounds really dumb. Uh, I like training legs, and uh, back day's fun as well. But then, Lee's favorite, like I said, arms. And I think it also depends on like how I look. Yeah, I mean, because I still have those, uh, everybody has those little things, those little ticks or insecurities about themselves that they'll look in the mirror and they'll be like, fuck, do I look like shit today or not feeling it, those things. So those things still occur, but you got to kick those things out and just stick to your thing. And that's also like I was saying, like there might be a time I just go in the gym and I'm feeling awesome and I'm training arms. And it's just, I don't know. Yeah. I also just, it's instinctive and then whatever makes me feel good. And yeah, right now I like training legs. Bob didn't like it the other day. We never train legs when we travel. We're halfway around the fucking world. And I'm like, let's train legs, Bob. He's like, really good idea, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, this one's probably a little bit more personal. So like, I was diagnosed like really low testosterone from like 16, 17. Uh -huh. um, and because there's so much regulation over here, doctors don't like to help you. Uh -huh. And essentially they're like, yeah, come back when you're 30 and yeah. then we can talk about something. Yeah. Um, so I ended up just using tests when I was about, well, 2022 uh -huh. because I was like my head was fucked and I needed oh, something yeah. to help it um, but now the doctors are still just like yeah take one mil every four weeks so it just does <laughs> yeah that. so you feel like shit by about three weeks anyway yeah would you say kind of just go fuck what they say and yeah. do what you think's right personally or, yeah yes mm -hmm. right. there's 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 a lot there's information out there that you can get from like medical studies that have occurred, yeah. like that you probably already read about people taking 200 or 250 yeah. milligrams. Well, I was arguing with the end on like, that's just a bad fucking idea. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> well. Yeah, I mean, sorry. right now I think it's been, for me, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a very regulated person when it comes to hormones, mm -hmm. my hormones, because I know that like, like it's not just about, uh, you know, your testosterone is going to be tied to pretty much everything yeah. in your body. It's like a woman with a her period. You're like, fuck you, bitch, you are nuts. <laughs> You're like, okay, but then that's kind of what you turn into or myself or anybody because yeah. when your hormones go like this, you're a moody fucking cunt, you know? <laughs> so... It's, uh, it's those things that you're, that you personally, I used another one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Can we send I know, that's why I'm allowed to say it. <laughs> that kind of your ass kicked. <laughs> uh, uh, but it's those things like, uh, there's enough studies out there to do your own little science experiment with yourself, and again, it goes back to taking it seriously. Yeah. Making sure that you have your anti-ease, okay. making sure that you, uh, anti-ease, and just, if you feel like shit or something's off, you kind of got to catch yourself because no one's going to watch you. They're, you're in a position where it kind of sucks. Uh, back home in, in the States would be a little bit different. Um, but at the same time, uh, just hold your shit together. Because me, for a long time, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I was taking a thousand mix, or a thousand mix of tests a week. And then like, I don't know what was going on. I was just hoping it worked. It was a really dumb fucking idea. So if you stay at those doses, uh, you know, two, three hundred milligrams a week, 
um, you know, you stay consistent with it. Mm -hmm. Remember, for every react, for every action, there's a reaction. Yeah. If you have a drastic action, there's going to be a drastic fucking reaction. Yeah. Um, and then just study up about esters. You know, like you said, one week later you're going to be fucking back down. Yeah. You know, and to find out when it peaks, when it doesn't, so you can make sure you're just doing it the best of your abilities. Mm. So it's all there in the information on the internet. Yeah. Not the fucking forums. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the forums can help with the, the little things like anti ease. There are questions that you could go to forums and ask, like, hey, I'm in this position. But if it sounds like shit and smells like shit, it's shit. <laughs> yeah. No, as well, I read, I like to read a lot of the medical studies, but then it's you have to go to like an endocrinologist and they say, just don't do that, do this. And you're like, that sounds really dumb. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I, I still like, uh, for example, the HRT clinic I know, like I in the beginning when I started talking to them, they have questions about like what bodybuilders did and why. And I'm like, this is why. And they're like, wow, it's really fucking dumb. Like, no. <laughs> you know, and that could and, and like for every for everything out there, you know, everything was created for a reason. Mm. Like Anadrol. Like Anadrol is nuts. You take fifty megs of it, you're gonna know. You take a hundred megs of it, you're like, holy fuck, I am awesome. <laughs> but then you're like, what's the side effects? What was created for somebody that has muscle wasting disease? Like it's you know, it's AIDS and cancer patients and people that have you know muscle muscle disorders and here we are healthy, able bodied men fucking eating it by the eating it like candy going, Jesus, look at me, this is great. Not thinking about what's going on. So those are things, just be mindful of everything. Everything has a purpose and you know you already seem like you have, you have a grasp on it. But I don't think until you're 30, you're going to get an answer that you'd like. Mm. But you should be okay because I don't think 200 milligrams a week of testosterone is going to kill you. Yeah, no, but they, they had me on like 200 milligrams every four weeks and it was just... Yeah, no, it's really shit. dumb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good. Uh, who else was it? Uh, what shock training methods do you employ? Shock training methods? Yeah, like platoons, 21s, uh, one halves. So Every, everything. The one he just said, Seth sex, yeah. So, uh, Seth sex is like such an ego, egotistical thing to call it. I ain't even fucking set after myself. <laughs> I was doing it when I was young. I was like, you know, it's half the weight, twice the reps. So if I do like the hundreds on inclines for like 20 reps, or no, we'll do this. If I was doing like the 150s on the on incline dumbbell uh, presses, I got like, say I got 10, now I gotta drop the weight, cut it in half, go to 75 pounds, and then I got to do 20 reps. So I did half the weight, twice the reps. And the reason I did that was, was because like, I knew that that drop set, I had to mentally prepare myself and get those 20 reps. Do I actually ever reach it in one set? No. But it forces me to, to, to go after that number. Because if you just work to failure, like you're gonna quit early. But if I can actually get to a number that's gonna push me past it that I'm actually not able to achieve, man, you got something. So I do those, um, anything, you know, 10 by 10 training on squats. You get 315 and do 10 sets of 10 on squats. By that eighth set, you're fucking crying and saying, I really wish I wouldn't have did this. You gotta get your body out of the comfort zone. So bro, I'll do anything. Like I, like I was telling him earlier, I fucking love training, you know? So, and there's so much out there, FST7 from Honey Rambod, that was another big one for me. Uh, the y, what is it, Y3T. Um, all that, I mean, oh, there's so much out there. I, I tend to go to things that are much more volume based just because I like the blood flow, I love the pump. Um, it's something that uh, I, I get off on it. That's my shit. So that's it, yeah. How do you cope with major injuries? I fucking, as long as I don't die or kill anybody, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> major injuries suck. Everybody, you know, everybody, that's something that'll fucking fuck with anybody's head um, and the best thing is is to make sure me personally like this is a thing in life that everybody should look should pay attention to is that uh, don't be one-dimensional okay so if you're one-dimensional and that one dimension leads who are you what do you do what do you have nothing so for me I have weight training I have a family I have a business I have good people in my life so if I have all those things and one of them gets taken from me, is it going to suck? Oh, you're fucking A right it is. But at least there's going to be other things to help fill those voids. Yeah. So don't ever be one dimensional. Always make sure that like, because that's why you see some bodybuilders, like professional competitors, when they get hurt, they go down a rough fucking road, dude. Because they put it all out there. And that's what's tough about this industry. 
because you're a fucking dime a dozen, dude. You get fucking hurt, some company will be like, all right, fuck him, moving on, next one, let's go. <clears throat> so, and, and, and what that does to your psyche, you feel worthless, you doubt yourself, you're fucked. It's really hard to come back from. So with me, like, I've been hurt, I tore my pec, I dislocated my hand when I was younger. A couple years ago, I, I, I fucking hurt my knee squatting. I wasn't able to do my cardio for like eight weeks, all that stuff, and it fucked with me, but I got through it. I'm not gonna die, I don't wanna kill myself, I'm not gonna give up. But they're just things to make sure you stay, you know, stay on top of your game, stay on top of making sure you have good people in your life. Yeah, yeah it was a big part for me. When um, you went to compete in the Opens, uh -huh. what mistakes did you make? And what did you, while looking back, what would you have done differently when you uh, weren't successful there? Took myself a whole lot more seriously. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I was more special than I was. So like I was doing it all, everything went well, but I didn't pour my heart and soul into it. And then whenever I lost and fucked up, I blamed other people. So my thing was that was a big learning experience for me because whenever I said, you know, I fucked up in my life, I was one of those things that I could have did a whole lot better. I could have handled it a whole lot fucking better. And, uh, and at that point, you know, I had, I had everything going for me, and then I kind of, I screwed the pooch, and I really wish I wouldn't have, but, um, yeah, I would have, I would have, uh, I wouldn't have thought I was so high and mighty, you know, I, I wish I would have uh, handled the loss a lot better, I, I lost a friendship with Hani there for a minute, whenever he was looking out for me, I kind of blamed him for a lot of my problems when I was the one fucking training, so, um, yeah. You know, whenever you're competing, you know, but if you're not 100% in it, you are not going to get the result you want. So, and that's also what's tough because sometimes when you put your put everything into it, you don't get a result. You're like, oh, fuck this, I hate it. Fucks with your head again. So, uh, everything everything in life that I've learned is a learning experience. Like I was telling everybody, like, bro, I'm going to fuck up again. I'm not going to be perfect in my life. And whenever I do, with every mistake that you make, you just got to be willing to fucking go, okay, what actually happened? What was the reality of it? Like, did I fuck up or was it someone else's fault? If it's someone else's fault that, that happened and you blame them, where are you going to look like a fucking asshole? So it's best just to keep your mouth shut and go back to fucking work. So that's kind of how I handle things. And also, like I said, if I fuck up, I'm going to, I got to handle it like a man. Because that's what I'd expect people to do and I hold myself to it. Good. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming.